Welcome to Podcast 8-5, Angle Formulas. In this lesson, we're going to look at the four angle formulas and prove why they're true. And we're also going to look at a question of how we can determine the angle formed by the hands of a clock. The four angle formulas are determined by their vertex as to which one we're discussing. If the vertex is on the center, that is one type called central. If the vertex is on the circle, we call it an inscribed angle. If it's inside the circle, we call it an interior angle. And if it's outside the circle, we call it an exterior angle. The central angle is formed at the center of the circle. And the two sides of the angle chop off the circle right here at an arc. Notice that the arc is inside the angle. So this is the arc in question that goes with this angle. What you need to remember is the size of the angle. The size of the angle is equal to the arc. Well that kind of makes sense. It's almost like a definition of what an angle is. So much out of 360. So as an example of this, if the arc is 93 degrees as we see, then the angle is 93 degrees. Sometimes the arc that we're given is more than 180, or we're given the larger arc of the circle, and we want to know the one inside the angle. So in that case, we would have to do just a little bit of mathematics. Out of a full circle of 360, we could subtract the 238 as we see up here, and get the answer of 122. But again, the basic idea is the angle is equal to the arc. The angle here is equal to the arc here. It's not really anything we're going to prove. We're just going to say that's true like a postulate, if you will, and move on. Our next idea is the inscribed angle, where the corner of the angle is on the circle itself. Notice that inside the angle is an arc here. And again, the arc in question is always inside the angle. Inside the angle, we find this arc. The question now is, what is the size of the arc? One example of this is if we know that the arc is a certain amount, like the arc is 40 degrees, then the angle is going to be half of that 20 degrees. Why this is true is a different question. One way to prove that angle 1 is equal to the arc here is to draw it as a diameter so that we can create this triangle here. Now I've drawn a radius. We also have a radius here. So that means this radius is equal to that one. We'll call this angle newly formed here angle 2 and this angle outside angle 3. Well, we already know that angle 3 is equal to the arc. We also know that angle 3 is equal to 1 plus 2. That is, the exterior is equal to the remote interiors. Angle 3 is equal to angle 1 plus angle 2. Forgive my uh, not using the little m's in my notation, just to move this along. Well, if angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, and they are because this is an isosceles triangle, then really I have that angle 3 is equal to angle 1 plus, let's say, remove angle 2 and call it angle 1 again, or twice angle 1 is the size of angle 3. Which means if I divide both sides by 2, half the size of angle 3 is equal to angle 1, or half the arc is angle 1. So angle 1 is equal to half of the arc. More complex examples where you're given information that doesn't directly relate to the arc you're looking for, or the angle you're looking for. That is, you're given some different arcs. Given arc AC this way is 126, and given arc CB is 104. And I'm asking for the size of this angle, which is half of this arc. Well, if you just relate this out of 360, that is, a full circle is 360, and we subtract these two little arcs right here in question. Subtract this arc here and subtract this arc here, which I'm showing you. You'll have the arc that you need, 130, which half of that will give you the answer, 65. Interior angles are formed by two chords unrelated to the center. And as you can see, the angle is equal to half the sum of the arcs. A simple example of that would be if this arc up here was 20 and this arc over here was, say, 60. 
then by adding those two numbers this angle in here would be 40 or this angle because they're vertical angles that would be the 20 plus the 60 80 and take half of that 40 why would that be true how can we prove that angle 1 is half the sum of arc A and B what we're gonna do is draw this where I've created another triangle with other angles I'm gonna call this angle 2 and this angle 3 well, angle 2 is an inscribed angle, which means it's half of an arc. Inside this angle would be arc A. So angle 2 is half of angle A. The same is true for angle 3. Angle 3 is an inscribed angle with the arc B. So angle 3 is half arc B. We also know that because of this triangle here, angle 1 is exterior, or angle 1 is equal to 2 plus 3. So with a little substitution of angle 2 here and angle 3 here, we get the following equation. The measure of angle 1 equal, is equal to half arc A and half arc B. And if we factor out the halves, pull it to the side like the distributive property backwards, we get this. That angle 1 is the same as 1 half arcs A plus B. An exterior angle formed by secants, that is lines going through the circle, meeting outside of the circle, and inside of this angle we find two arcs. Inside the angle is the arc here, CD, and the arc here, AB. Again, the arcs are inside the angle. The formula is 1 half subtract the two arcs. No negative numbers, please, so the bigger arc minus the smaller arc. For example, if this arc was 60 and this arc was 20, then the size of the angle would be half 60 minus 20. 60 minus 20, taking half of that answer, giving us 20 as an answer. 40, half of 40 is 20. Why would this be true that the angle outside is half subtracting the arcs? Well, that's called proof, and this is how we do it. Here's our situation. Why is angle 1 1 half arc B minus arc A. Again, I'm going to create triangles. So I've drawn a chord. I'm going to call this angle here angle 2 and this angle over here angle 3. These newly formed angles are inscribed angles. Angle 2 goes with arc A and angle 3 goes with arc B. And what do we know? As before, angle 2 is half arc A and angle 3 is half arc B. Now here angle 3 is the exterior angle so angle 3 is equal to angle 1 plus angle 2. Well by rearranging this by subtracting 2 on the other side I can call this formula I need a little space here angle 1 is angle 3 minus angle 2. And by substituting these in the formula, I get angle 1 is half arc B minus half arc A. And again, if you distribute the half, that is factor the half out, distributive property backwards, this is 1 half B minus A. Hence the formula I was trying to prove. One interesting problem called the clock problem. That is, regardless of what time I say, can you figure out the angle formed by the hands of the clock? Well, a clock is a circle. A circle is 360 degrees divided into 12 sections. So we'll start with an easy one. At 3 o'clock, what is the angle? Well, we all can tell that it looks like a right angle. But out of 360 divided into 12 subdivisions, each arc is 30 degrees. 30 degrees, that is each hour. So for every hour of 30 degrees, we'd have three of them. Three thirties makes 90, 90 degrees. Change it to a different time is really just to add up different increment of 30 degree arcs. So at 5 o'clock, it would be 30, 30, 30, 30, and another 30. Or 5 times 30, 150 degree angle. But if I said the time was 3.30, well, then we have to know a little something about a clock. This is the, not the correct representation. At 3.30, the hour hand is actually halfway past. 
So if I want the angle formed here, I want the arcs over here, which of course is a 30 and a 30, but this is not 30. This is only half of a 30 or 15. So 30, 30, and 15 all add up to 75 degrees. And we can continue this into many different variations. For example, 345, which would mean the hour hand is at 45 minutes past the hour, which also means 15 minutes left to go in the hour. 45 minutes have passed, 15 minutes left to go. So we're talking about a quarter of an hour left to go. We're talking about a quarter of the 30 degree arc. So this is 30 degrees, 30, 30, 30, 30, and only one fourth of 30 degrees. Add up all those numbers and you'll have the answer to the angle formed by the hands of the clock. This has been Podcast 8-5, Angle Formulas. Thank you.